whether you dress like an Italian or talk like a Frenchman or make love like a Polish man, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Georgia's Tornica Kipiani is ready to take you as you are. Shall we talk about it? <laughs> Let's Let do it. it. Ornica Kipiani, winner of Georgian Idol, then he internally selected his song Take Me As I Am. This is a very at once throwback but experimental rock song, I'd say. It feels familiar in some ways, like from the noughties. However, his swerve on this is somehow different. There's screaming, but it's musical. It feels very of the moment. He says, why do I have to dress like this, walk like that, talk like that? He wants you to take him as a Georgian. He's gently asserting his identity, gently promoting authenticity. There's a lot here is what I'm trying to say. This is not just some dated rock song, which I think some people have said. If you actually listen, if you open your ears and your heart, you will discover a lot. Robin, what about you? I really like the song. Um, it reminds me of the kind of music that I used to, the sort of grunge rock that I used to listen to in the 90s when I was a young person. And that sort of familiarity, um, so I, I kind of connect to it with that. I like the little guitar tricks they've done. You can see in the, um, the video, they've got like, um, I think it's a car driving along the guitar fretboard. So you hear all this scrapey noises. Having kind of weird things like that in the song just makes it a bit more interesting than your sort of standard, slickly produced Eurovision track. Um, I also like the meaning of the lyrics of really, um, you know, being true to yourself and, you know, standing up for who you are and your own culture. Because um, in New Zealand, we have this thing called the cultural cringe where um, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, being a New Zealand culture isn't as good as English culture you know, or American culture. And it's really about saying, actually, we've got some quite good stuff going on here. Um, and that's what the song is. It's about celebrating your own style instead of looking to other cultures and sort of going, well, I'm not as stylish as this Italian guy or, you know, I'm not an awesome football player like the Germans are. It's really just saying I'm Georgian or whoever. Um, and this is who I am. These are my strengths, and I'm proud of that. And um, I think it's a really important message. And I also like that he's kind of picking on the Eurovision Big Five by those um, four, five cultures. I was very pleasantly surprised with this. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of selection methods that are just selecting the artist and then selecting the song. I think it is the Eurovision Song Contest, and the song needs to be put first. However... When the song came out, do you know what? It does suit him perfectly. Yeah. His voice has got this amazing raspy tone. And on the big, the verses, you know, the verses they plod along, the lyrics are kind of strange for me, but strange in a fun way. But when, when the chorus comes, it is just boom. And I wish I could have seen this on the Eurovision stage because I know with the fire, the smoke, it would have been epic. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not my kind of song on paper, um, but it certainly brought something different to the contest. You know, Georgia was staying true to itself. Um, you know, interesting lyrics, maybe a bit cringe. Maybe they could have been thought through better. But this is really interesting. And I really think that if we had been able to see this in Rotterdam, we would have been blown away by the power. You know, Tony Kekipiani, <clears throat> I think he's, um, I like him a lot. I like him a lot. And it's interesting because if you kind of delve into his backstory, he kind of formed a band when he was young in his teen years. And we're looking for a vocalist because actually he's a master. He plays lots of instruments. But you know what he did? He auditioned himself <laughs> as a vocalist for his own band. <laughs> Who does that? And of course, he gave himself the spot. Yeah, I, I, I like 
like his voice. I like his attitude. I like his sense of freedom. I like what he does. I like his approach to music. I like the sort of the grunge rock um, aspect with actually quite clear pop sensibilities as well. The song itself, hmm, I'm not crazy about it. I mean, if it's coming back next year, it's great. Welcome back. But we need you to actually compose a song, you know, like a clear, not, not a rant, because it feels a bit like a rant. Um, he's a big deal in Georgia, of course. In 2014, he won the X Factor, and he was mentored by Tamta for a year. And then he won Georgian Idol, and that became the selection method. Um yeah, his previous song, You Are My Sunshine, again, has that sort of techno-industrial sound, and I think he excels at that. And I like the way his voice marries up with female vocals, because in Take Me As I Am, there's a slight female undertone as well, which gives it that much more rounded sound. He is great. He is great. Take Me As I Am, well, you know what, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> if you want me to take you as you are, I'm going to be honest, and this isn't necessarily gaslighting me. So you're not taking it. All right. I think a lot of people are underselling the evolution within the song. The verses, he is vulnerable. He is broken. The pre-chorus, he's growing in confidence. And in the chorus, he's like, look, I'm going to be honest. You need to take me as I am. He's like found his voice. I really like that progression. I also like how this woman kind of screams je t'aime. Like, je t'aime is supposed to be all romantic in French, but here she is shrieking it. So it's just very interesting, which I think reflects the song as a whole. In any case, time to give our scores out of 10, along with a prediction of how this would have done and a justification, Robin. Okay, I really liked it. I've given it eight out of 10, but I'm, I don't think it would have qualified. Um, Georgia had some success with the rock song in 2016, but that was a more sort of uh, Britpop, um, a more sort of friendly sound to it. This, um, I think, is more niche and it won't appeal to enough um, listeners to get um, a high enough score to, to qualify. But still, I like when Georgia is just being true to themselves. Well, for me, it's a 7 out of 10. Um, it's not the kind of song I would listen to, just, you know, walking down the street or whatever, but live, I know it would absolutely just blow up. And I think it would have qualified. I think you, the juries would absolutely rate up those vocals. And I think all the non-Eurovision fans that watch it and are like, oh, this is something a bit different, this is something a bit edgy, a bit rocky, would have been like, absolutely yes. So I think this would have been another surprise qualifier like 2016, and actually I think it would have done even better. I think it's a really strong entry from Georgia, and um, I look forward to see what he can bring to us next year. With the notable exception of um, Nina Sublati and possibly Tamara Gachaladze, I feel that every Georgian entry underscores with the message, we are Georgians. You know, this is not about aiming to win. This is certainly not about, well, it's not even, even about qualification. It's about participation. Yes. And, you know, I feel that in that sense, Georgia just want to present a song that they're proud of. They're not necessarily looking to present a song that Europe is embracing or happy with. Would this have qualified? I would have liked it to. I'm giving this a 6.5. I think there are strong merits here. Um, and I think next year, if he does take, if he does fine tune and if he does polish and if he does refine, which isn't always a bad thing, I think that he could court a much wider audience. My score is a 7. I was on the fence of whether this would qualify, but I tend to think that it would. Was Sasha Jean-Baptiste doing the staging? I'm, yeah. For, yeah, so SJB was on the case, mm. and she, of course... It knows, doesn't matter. She worked on Tamara Gatichelazzi, and where did that come? Well, you know what? She also worked on Isha Kosovov, and that did get them through. So she knows how to deal with psychedelic rock, and I'm sure she could do with this edgy kind of experimental rock. I think that... Um, Georgia and the SJB, they understand each other and they've had this long-term relationship. You know, she did Nina Sublati. I'm sorry, those tears were everything. It's still, to me, one of the most iconic kind of first impressions I've ever had. I was like, oh my God, 
she slays. In any case, we are not the only wee wee bloggers. There are dozens of them all over the world and Miss Robin Gallagher has been taking their scores for several weeks with a whip and a calculator. And she has come up with the overall global average. And across these dozens of people, that average is a five. A five. Now this song is very divisive. I think we can agree on that. And so there were probably a lot of low scores. Robin, do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, it, it's... Some people, you either really like it or you really dislike it. There's no one, who, not many people who are sitting there giving it an average score. Well, that's what we think. What do you think? Does Georgia deserve more than a five? Could Georgia have made it to the final? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. Don't forget to give us a like down there. <laughs> And yes, follow us on multiple social media platforms. We're on Instagram and we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.